Welcome. Today we're talking about divine disconnections and how to recognize a divine disconnection. I'm Cassandra Mack, founder of Strategies for Empowered Living.com and Cassandra Mack Ministries.com, where we bring you church by phone. For more information about church by phone, my podcast, books, inspirational hoodies, t shirts, mugs, or corporate training, you'll see the links to my website, Amazon author page, in the video description box that'll take you to all the other places. So, we're talking about divine disconnections. A lot of times, as believers, we understand the importance and the relevance of a divine of a divine connection when a person comes into our life and we know that God sent them for a reason, a season or a lifetime. But there is also a divine disconnection when God allows certain people to leave our life because their season in our life is over. The reason that they came into our life, meaning the purpose has been fulfilled or where we are going in terms of our next they are not able to go with us into our next and we have to be willing and able to let them go. And so sometimes what will happen as you are growing, as you are moving towards in purpose and destiny, you will experience a divine disconnection. And sometimes it does not feel good, especially when it is somebody who you've known for a long time. It could even be a family member. If you remember the story of Abraham where he was told to go from his father's house uh, his uh, kinsmen uh, and his and his and the land uh, to a place that God was going to show him. If you remember that from the book of Genesis, that uh, Abraham was told, and at the time his name was Abraham, but he was told to go from his father's house, his country, and his kinsmen, meaning his family, to a place that God was going to show him. So God did not show him the place yet. He had to do his part first. He had to be willing to go from the things that were familiar. Abraham was the first generational curse breaker in his family line. His family worshiped pagan gods and uh, Abraham worshiped uh, uh, the one true God. And so as a result of that, God was leading him to begin to move away from those pagan practices, to begin to move away from uh, his family, his land, and the tradition that he was brought up into because God was going to do a new thing in his life and was going to bless him generationally. And so a lot of times when we come to an impasse in our life where divine disconnections are about to take place, it can feel real lonely. It could be difficult. It could feel like we're losing our support system. It could feel like there's nobody we have when we want to pick up the phone and just talk to somebody. And that is where God begins to not only prune away what is not necessary for our next, what is not aligned with our vision and values, but also to pour into us the things that we need to be strengthened on the inside so we can unlock more and more of the kingdom within. Our kingdom within represents all of the spiritual potential that God placed inside of us. And so as we begin to unlock the kingdom within, less and less we rely on people because we realize that God is our source and supply. So I want to take you to the book of Ruth so that we can look at how Ruth clung to her mother, clung to her mother-in-law Naomi, but Oprah, the other daughter-in-law, kissed her goodbye. And the importance of respecting the kiss goodbye. Respecting the kiss goodbye. And sometimes it's not a literal kiss goodbye, but it is a figurative kiss goodbye in that the person is leaving your life. And rather than being mad, having a messy fallout, giving them your blessings and being like, so be it. Now, again, I want to be clear. I am not talking about parents raising minor children. I'm talking about instances where we're, we're, uh, we're focusing on adults. And I think many of you know that this channel is a Bible-based channel geared for believers. So I always like to make sure that you are in the right place uh, because that is the audience for this channel so that you are not in a place that does not resonate with uh, your beliefs. You want to make sure that uh, you do that. So with that being said, we're going to look at the book of Ruth, the first chapter. 
right? And so what's happening here is that there was a famine in Naomi's homeland. So Naomi's husband uh, moves them to Moab and they lived there for many years, right? Naomi, her husband, her two sons and their wives. But what happened was Naomi's husband and her sons died. So at this point, it's just Naomi and her daughter-in-laws, Ruth and Oprah. And Naomi gets word that the famine in her homeland is over. And so she wants to return to her homeland and doesn't want to live in Moab anymore. And so her and her daughters set out to return back to the land of Judah. And so on their trip, on their way, Naomi says to her daughter-in-laws, you know, each of you should go back to your mother's homeland so that the Lord can show you kindness as you've shown to me and my sons. And may God grant you a rest in the home of another husband because that was life during that time in history. And so she was eventually saying, I don't have nothing to offer you. You're still young enough where you can marry again. So I'm going to go back to my homeland. But, you know, you might as well go back, you know, to your homeland. And so there was no messiness. There was no drama. Basically, you need to go back where your people are. Now, it's interesting because the responses of the two daughter-in-laws was very different. And here's where it is telling, right? So Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. She kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. By the time we get to verse 14, we see that Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. This is very, very telling. And so sometimes what happens is when people are willing to kiss us goodbye, we fight the goodbye kiss. We fight the goodbye kiss by begging them to stay. We, as if we can't live without them. And the reality is this is going to be hard to hear, but I want to be very clear that the audience is believers. I am speaking to the believer. And so if you truly believe that God is your source and your supply, if you truly believe that what you need, you get from God, then that means there is no human being on the planet that you cannot live without. You may desire their company. You may love them with everything you got, but there is no human being on the planet who you cannot live without. Your emotions may try to convince you that you cannot live without them. But the bottom and top line is you're born alone and you're going to die alone. You are born alone and you are going to die alone. Even if you are a twin, you come out one at a time and you die alone. And so we're going to love people and it's going to pain us when people want to leave our life. And this doesn't mean we can't be prayerful, right? This doesn't mean that we can't try to work things out that we want to work out. But it also means that we need to understand when a divine disconnection is taking place and when someone is willing to kiss us goodbye. Sometimes we got to be willing to accept the kiss goodbye because oftentimes it is a divine disconnection. They cannot go with us into our next for whatever reason, whether they're unable to, they lack the maturity, their heart's not 100% with us, whatever the reason is, this is key. But when you look at Ruth, Ruth clung to Naomi. In verse 16, she says, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you because where you're going to go, where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. 
Where you die, I will die, and I'm going to be buried wherever you buried. You ain't getting rid of me. And so they had two different mindsets when we look at Ruth versus her sister-in-law, Oprah. And so Ruth knew that there was something she needed from Naomi. And sometimes we can't explain what it is we need from an individual, but we know that our destiny is divinely connected to theirs. We may not have all of the pieces of the puzzle together, but we know that there is something we need from an individual. It might be wisdom. It might be knowledge. It might be their life experience. It's going to look different for each of us. But Ruth knew that there was something that she needed from Naomi that was connected to purpose and destiny. She's very clear about that. To the point where she was like, I'm going with you. There's nothing left for me here in Moab. Nothing. And sometimes when you're at a turning point in your life where you're not quite sure what the future is going to look like, but you know you can't stay where you are. Sometimes you don't have a complete picture of the puzzle, but you know what you don't want. That's a starting point. That's a starting point. Sometimes we don't have all the answers. We don't know what tomorrow's going to look like, but you know what you don't want. And so she knew that there was nothing left for her in Moab. Ruth knew this. And so sometimes you're like, there's nothing left for me here. What's here for me? Now, I don't know what's around the corner. I don't know what the new job is going to look like. Or if I'm moving, I don't know what the new place is going to look like, the new city, the new country. I don't know what the new goal is going to look like. If I leave this toxic relationship, I don't know what it's going to look like. But I know that I can't stay where I'm at. I can't. And so sometimes as you are elevating into your next, relationships are going to change. And you will experience not just divine connections, but divine disconnections. And so we see two things happening here. Well, multiple things, but relative to the topic today. We see divine connection between Ruth and Naomi. And we see a divine disconnection between Oprah and Naomi. She respected the kiss. Can you respect when somebody you love and have history with chooses to kiss you goodbye? Or you going to cling to their feet. You got to know who to cling to and who to allow to kiss you goodbye. Now that's between you and God. I don't have the answer to that. That's between you and God. You have to be prayerful. But there are some people that when they kiss you goodbye, you got to let them go with everything you got. There's no arguing. There's no fighting about it. You can even bless them. And sometimes a person could do you dirty and you'll still be able to bless them for the fact that they're walking out your life. And you're like, I'm better than this. And so the interesting thing about Naomi is that Naomi changes her name to Mara, which means bitter. And she was, in, she, she was struggling with bitterness, lost her sons, lost her husband. She, she, she was grieving. Right? When we're grieving, part of grief is anger. It's one of the stages of grief. And so she's in a place where she is grieving to the point where she's like, change my name to Mara. I'm bitter. But with all of that, Ruth knew that there was something about Naomi that was connected to her destiny. And so sometimes God will put something you need and someone who's hard to get along with. But there's something you need. Sometimes there could be a supervisor who can open a door for you. They, they, ooh, they difficult. But for that season in your life, there's something that you need. And so you got to know who do I cling to or cleave is a better word, not cling. Who do I cleave to? Like Ruth cleave to Naomi. And who do I allow to kiss me goodbye with absolutely no resistance? 
be clear. Because there will be divine disconnections for your next. There will be divine disconnections for your 2023. A lot of you are going to experience divine disconnections this year. So that you're starting 2023 fresh. But with every divine disconnection, at some point, there's also a divine connection. Now, they might not happen at the same time. Usually you experience the divine disconnection first. And then as the space is open, the space is open for new connections to come into your life. And sometimes what will happen is if you've ever prayed for God to send you good friends and you lost all your friends, anybody ever had that? Put a two in the chat. Put a two in the comment section, I should say. You pray for good friends and you lose all your friends. You're like, God, I just prayed for good friends. And you took away all my friends. And God, no, I answered your prayer because they wasn't good friends. And I'm going to pour into you. You're going to experience a season of solitude so that I can pour into you richly. And then there's going to be a space open for you to meet better quality friends, people who are loyal. But we got to clear away and prune what's not going to serve your next. No, I answered your prayer. You're looking at this the wrong way. And so what am I saying? As you begin to take stock of relationships where you've fallen out with people, relationships where people have left your life without cause and you're like I can't understand why they never return my calls I can't understand why they invite everybody else except me I can't understand why I'm never invited included or considered I can't understand why I was good to this person and they just they ghosted me they MIA I can't understand how I was a good friend to this person and they were gossiping about me trash talking me you found out about it that's a divine disconnection Start thanking God. Start thanking God for the people he allows to leave your life and the doors that he closes. See, Mark 2.22 tells us that you cannot pour new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wineskins will be lost. They'll be destroyed. You pour new wine into new wineskins. And so there has to be a pruning away of some of the old things in our lives, the divine disconnections for God to send new people into our life. And so it's interesting bringing it back to the story of Ruth. And so they go back to the homeland and Boaz takes notice of Ruth and Naomi being the older mother-in-law schools Ruth on the customs so that she could position herself to be able to get Boaz. Now that was her particular destiny. And so while your destiny may not be Boaz, your destiny may be a specific goal. It may be mental healing. It may be emotional well-being, peace of mind, joy, a, a, a particular uh, business that you are trying to start. So it'll look different for each individual. But the point is that when you allow divine disconnections to take place, what happens is you also make room for divine connections to take place because Ruth could have ran after her sister-in-law and be like, you know what? We both from the same hometown. We are both from Moab. So you know what, Naomi? I'm going to go with her. You know, we're, we're, we're both from the same hometown. We understand the same customs. But no, she didn't do that. She didn't do that. When Oprah kissed Naomi goodbye, Ruth was, all right, let's go. Let's go, Naomi. I'm with you. I'm rolling with you. She respected the divine disconnection. So where can it be said in your life that you are starting to see divine disconnections and rather than crying over spilt milk, Begin to get prayerful and say, God, what's for me in my next? God, where are you taking my life? What new things are you going to be doing in my life? Because 
if you are allowing these doors to close and these people to leave my life, then it also means that you are going to be opening some new doors and allowing some new people to come into my life. And so just be prayerful about it and understand that just how there are divine connections, there are also divine disconnections. And when adults want to kiss you goodbye, and you know you've been good to them, you've done right by them, understand that it's not always that they hate them. Sometimes their season in your life is merely over. Sometimes the purpose for which they came into your life has come to an end and you have got to go into your next season. Their part in your story is over. Their part in your story is over. And sometimes it's over for a few chapters and you'll meet again months down the road, years down the road, and sometimes it's over for good. You and God, you know, you'll go to God to figure that out. But with that being said, I hope you found this information helpful. Don't forget to like and share. I need everyone to like and share this video. If you are getting value from this channel and you would like to sow into the channel, you will see a heart underneath the video where you can give a donation. It's called a super thanks. If you would like to sow into the ministry, you can go to CassandraMacMinistries.com. You'll see a tab that says give and you can follow the prompts. A lot of you ask, do I have a cash app? I do. The cash app is the cash sign, the Cassandra Mac. So for anyone who feels led to sow a seed into the ministry or the channel, we thank you. We thank those of you who sow into the ministry. We could not do what we do without you. So I thank God for you. For those of you who want to come to church by phone this Sunday, we are wrapping up our series on the uh, ways to experience wealth. And so we've been talking about the seven levels of wealth. And so far, we've talked about level one through five. And this coming Sunday, we're going to be talking about levels six and seven. If you miss the previous uh, sessions or uh, church by phone sessions specifically with this series, Experiencing Wealth Beyond the Cash Flow Realm, you can just look through the YouTube channel and you will see uh, by number, it'll, it'll say uh, Experiencing Wealth Beyond the Cash Flow Realm, part one, part two, part three. So this Sunday is part four for anyone who wants to uh, attend. The information is in the video description box. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. You'll see the number and the access code. I also want to share with you some resources that will help you begin to just move your life in the direction of peace and joy and well-being using Bible-based strategies. And the uh, two books are Simple Prayers to Pray When You Don't Know What to Say. So that's a book of brief, immediate prayers that are Bible-based. So each prayer starts with a scripture. Then it goes into the prayer point, whether you're praying for direction or wisdom, maybe you're confused and we know that God is not the author of confusion. So you are praying for God's direction. So each prayer gives you the Bible scripture and then it goes into the actual prayer point. And that's simple prayers to pray when you don't know what to say. There's also a mental health edition. So there are prayers in the second book, Simple Prayers to Pray to Support Your Mental Health. There are prayers in that book specifically for PTSD, stress management, anxiety, grief and loss, depression, and when you work in a difficult workplace that's taken a toll on you mentally. And again, all of my books can be found on Amazon by just typing in my name. And some of my books, not all, but some are available at Walmart by a uh, going to Walmart and uh, typing in Cassandra Mac books. So with that being said, have an amazing day. And uh, always remember, you hold the pen that writes the chapters of your life. Make your story an amazing one.